What's going on, everybody? Good afternoon, and I think it's about that time again, guys. I think it's about time we start doing mock drafts, and look, for some of you guys, I know it's too early. I know that you can't be thinking about draft stuff yet, and I totally get it. We're two games into the season, but I like to start early, and I like to keep my eye on as many things as possible. So we are going to be opening up the can here today. I've got Mock Draft version 1.0. It's going to be a full seven round draft for the Seahawks, of course. I'm not doing it for every team. I'm not crazy. <coughs> Excuse me. And yeah, it's just going to be an initial thought of how this draft could potentially go in 2025. So a couple of notes. I am accounting for compensatory picks that we will probably have we can't know for sure what the compensatory picks are until we get them but you can project and i'm largely using the mock draft database to approximate player value which is always going to be shaky especially at this point and by the end of the year is going to be very different i understand that but we work with the information that we have um, I think that's mostly it. We can just kind of go ahead and dive in right here, right now. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think when you're done with it. Let me know how you guys feel. I'll go through pick by pick, go through uh, one by one, and um, we'll, we'll, we'll see how people feel about it. But this is my initial take at a Seahawks mock draft. So, first round... Keep in mind that I'm not even going to bother trying to approximate where our picks are going to be. I'm just going to estimate that we're going to pick a little late, but not super late in the rounds. I don't think we're going to win the Super Bowl, but I think we've got a good team that should make the playoffs right now. That's where I am. That's where I'm going to be. Emery Jones Jr. of LSU. He's a couple of different things, potentially, depending on how you personally look at him. Emory Jones Jr. could be a right tackle. He could also be a left guard. So either way, there's probably a place for him on this team. If he plays right tackle, then you're kind of moving on from Abe Lucas. And I have a feeling right now that this team is going to move on from Abe Lucas after this season is done. But if they don't, or if they decide they need another left, tack left guard even more, because they don't really have anything over there, then you can put Emory Jones Jr. over on the left guard side. I think he'll be able to slide inside perfectly fine, and there you go. So either way, Emory Jones Jr. would be a great first pick. He's currently projected to be like a late-ish first rounder. And right then and there, you've done a lot to address your offensive line issues. Before I move into the last six rounds of this draft, I hope you like this video. If you do, please click the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Helps the channel out a lot. Click the bell for notifications. Consider becoming a channel member for $2 a month. Those are the best ways to help support. Moving right along here to our pick in round number two. A little bit of a curveball here. I don't know how people are going to feel about this one, but I decided to go with Oscar Delp, tight end out of Georgia. Oscar Delp is an extremely talented tight end who hasn't really produced that much yet. He's got like three catches in three games so far this year. So we haven't seen it yet. Last year, he had like 25 catches for less than 300 yards. The production is underwhelming, but the talent is big. And if you're losing Noah Fant after this season, and you're looking for a playmaking tight end to replace him, Oscar Delp should be your guy. He's got all the athletic traits that you're looking for in a stud tight end one. So. I know it's a little bit of a curveball, but I'm a fan. Hopefully, at some point this year, he can actually start producing at least some. But the talent is definitely there. Okay, round three, I'm going with a safety. Because I do think that Rayshon Jenkins, probably not a long-term solution here. He's a little bit on the older side. And I do think that McDonald's defense is going to really want to stack up that secondary. So... Andrew Makuba, safety from Texas, is my pick here. Uh, super talented. Incredibly talented. His speed and athleticism 
is off the charts. The only question with him is, can he learn how to play the position? So far in Texas, it's going fairly well. But I think if you got him under Coach McDonald for a year or two, you could make some beautiful things happen. This guy has the first a first round talent. I don't think he's going to be anywhere near the first round because the play isn't exactly where you want it to be. He, he doesn't have the polish of um, Starks or uh, Malachi Moore or any of those guys. But he is a really good prospect. And I know that people wouldn't love taking a safety this high with how good Ray Sean and Love look right now. But I think that McDonald is going to want to really stack up there. And he's going to want to do it in a way that isn't expensive with the cap. But it will require the usage of some draft picks. So Makuba, third rounder. Round four. And remember, we have two fourth round picks. <coughs> I go nose tackle with my first one. Nazir Stackhouse. I don't know if Stackhouse is actually going to be there in the fourth round. He's a Georgia guy. Those guys get their draft stock inflated. But right now, the database has him in the fourth round. So Stackhouse, one of the better nose tackles in this draft. He's somebody who actually plays a lot of snaps in the A-gap. And you look at the position we have right now. We don't have Hankins on, under contract next year. Cameron Young might be, he might be done. We might not really have any interest in him. Jaron Reed's a free agent. We don't really have anything in there. So a guy like Stackhouse should be able to alleviate a lot of the potential issues we have with the run stuffy nose tackle in the middle of the defense. So while I do think that you don't need a lot at that position because you can play Murphy there a little bit, you could even play Lenny there, or excuse me, Lenny Big Cat there a little bit if you need to. Having a guy like Nazir Stackhouse to really eat up those grueling snaps I think would be great so that's my first fourth round pick we have another one because of the Damian Lewis contract that he got in Carolina I'm going with Bryce Foster center out of Kansas previously he was a Texas A&M Aggie now he's in Kansas playing well playing good and we're going to need a center you could make an argument that we need to attack center earlier than this the problem is this is not a good draft for centers. I don't think there's any way we're going to be able to afford Connor Williams after this year unless he plays really badly. And if he plays really badly, then we're not going to want him. So Bryce Foster might be the second or third best center in this class. And he's somebody that I've had my eye on for a while now. I thought he would declare years ago. He didn't. And he might be a day one starter, which is dicey, but... I think he can do it. I think he's got the pedigree for it. I think he's got the talent for it. And if you're not doing this, you're probably trying to take Parker Brailsford in like the second or third round. And I don't even know Brailsford is going to come out. He hasn't played that well so far this year. And he really only has minimal experience playing college football with that one really good year at Washington. And now whatever happens this year at Alabama. So... I think that you kind of have to make sure you get Foster or Brailsford. And in this particular mock draft, I decided to go with Foster. There's just not going to be money to get a big free agent or retain Connor Williams at the center spot. So got to make do with it. And I think Foster's a good player. I'm impressed with what I've seen so far this year. I think it can work. So that would be the way I double dip in round two with those two players. Okay, round five, finally go linebacker. I know I held off on it, but I don't like this linebacker class at all. Finally went with Karen Reed of Utah for the linebacker spot. Um, the thing that stands out to me with Reed is his ability to get off blockers. Most of the linebackers in this class don't know how to get off blocks at all. Karen Reed can slide off blocks a little bit. So I think that that is something that McDonald's going to like. That's something he's going to covet. That's something he's going to want. Because I don't think we can keep Baker or Dodson. Maybe we can keep one, but we certainly can't keep both, and we might not be able to keep either. So if Tyrese Knight is the future at one spot, I want someone with a little bit more power and size to them at the other spot, and Karen Reed fills that in relatively well. We haven't had great experiences with Utah defensive players, but 
That's the way we're going. By the way, we have a round five pick because of a compensatory pick. I know we traded our native round five pick for our big cat. I'm aware. Round six, Dane Key, wide receiver out of Kentucky. Um, You know, don't sleep on receiver being a position the Seahawks need to address because if this is Lockett's last year, and I feel like it is ultimately, then there may be... I'm not convinced this team is going to want to give Bobo 50 snaps a game. And right now the Seahawks are in three receiver sets about 75% of the time. So if you just move forward with no locket, that means that's basically what you're asking Bobo to do, 40 to 50 snaps a game. That might not be the role that Bobo can excel in, that he might be a guy who is best off playing 20 snaps a game. And don't be surprised if they make an early round push for a receiver especially in a class this good. Now, I'm not going there. I'm going with a sixth-round guy who I think could push a guy like a Derek Young and maybe replace a guy like Chenault, but don't sleep on it. And final pick for this will be Michael Ford Jr., left guard out of Kansas. Uh, teammates with Bryce Foster, another uh, Kansas offensive lineman. They'll have familiarity, and I think the most realistic scenario is that Emory Jones takes over right tackle from Abe Lucas. So you're probably going to have a serious need for left guard. And while maybe Bradford can move there, maybe Haynes can move there, Michael Ford Jr. is actually playing left guard right now at Kansas. So he can do it because we're watching him do it right now. All right. So that is my draft. There might be a bonus seventh round pick coming from a compensatory uh, standpoint. But uh, to my knowledge, probably not. So I think that's all the picks we have right now when everything shakes out. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll pick up a bonus seventh, but even if we are, I'm not too worried about it. All right, let me know what you think. See you guys later. Go Hawks.